Now here's a question that nobody seems to have asked yet. Why were there no counter protesters? It seems just the sort of thing that Antifa and BLM would have wanted to go to in order to counter protest and yet no one. It's almost as if the organizers of these groups were told to stand down. Was the siege of the Capitol orchestrated by Democrats? Mr. Reagan. Now before I begin, I need to say that this video, more than any other video I've ever done, is hugely speculative. There are, of course, facts around which I'm basing my speculation, but this entire video is just thinking through what happened to the Capitol. It's in no way meant to be taken as a definitive account of what has happened. I'm merely trying to work out what happened and I could be wrong, and that's okay. In fact, that's kind of the point. And this video may be a target by YouTube, and really, that's a shame, because this is precisely the kind of speech that needs to be protected. Taking a number of odd facts that don't seem to make sense and trying to work out how they actually do make sense, trying to work out what the real story is behind the scenes, we should all be granted the freedom to do that. Because censoring speculation and ideas that you don't like, that might seem all fine and good until you find out one day that those speculations and those ideas you've censored, well, they were right. Well, then, not so fine, not so good. So I challenge those who want to censor this video. Instead of censorship, try debunking me. If I'm wrong, then post the truth. Because I don't really enjoy the conclusions that I've drawn. And I sincerely hope that I am wrong. But we should all have the freedom to think out loud, especially about politics. All right, now with that out of the way, let me try to prove to you that the siege of the Capitol was in fact orchestrated by Democrats. Many believe the attack on the Capitol was a false flag operation. A false flag operation is an operation conducted by one party that's intended to be blamed on another party. In this particular case, it's been speculated that Antifa or Black Lives Matter operatives went to the Capitol posing as Trump supporters in order to rile up the protesters and inspire a violent riot. They are trying to burn down our Capitol. And I did not come here for that wow. It ain't patriots up there anymore. If you go look, they look like Antifa. They don't look like me. They don't look like you guys. I see a lot of women, I see a lot of kids. Get your families home. Get out of here. If this is true, it was what's called a PSYOP. PSYOP is short for Psychological Operation. This is an operation designed to influence the perceptions and the attitudes of the public. So here's the reason that this makes sense. It makes sense for Democrats to have orchestrated this. The idea is that if there's a massive attack on the Capitol, immediately after Donald Trump's speech, then the Democrats could plausibly accuse Donald Trump for inciting it. And conservative Trump supporters could then be targeted and punished. In other words, the Democrats would have an excuse to persecute their political enemies. The siege of the Capitol didn't end up being that severe, however. Most of the protesters who breached the Capitol merely walked in with no resistance, and then they casually walked through the halls of the building without destroying anything or hurting anyone. No one who breached the Capitol that day was armed, despite reports from the Democrats who have persisted in claiming that they were. Now we've come to a moment where we had armed members of a mob incited by the president, militias that the president of the United States called to the Capitol. And it is not an exaggeration to say that many, many members of the House were nearly assassinated. I thought I was going to die. From the vast majority of those walking through the Capitol, there was zero violence and zero destruction. Nevertheless, Democrats have indeed exploited this event as an excuse to impeach Donald Trump again with a new false accusation. They're saying that he incited insurrection. They've targeted conservative protesters who don't appear to have done anything except calmly walk through the Capitol building, and they've stripped many conservatives of their First Amendment right to free speech, censoring various YouTubers, Facebook pages, and Twitter users, including the president himself. So whether or not this was a false flag, the Democrats have certainly exploited the moment in the most vicious way imaginable. There's absolutely a commission that's being discussed. We're going to have to figure out how we reign in our media environment 
so that you can't just say things that are false. The debate that's been raging in the news and on social media is whether or not the protesters were infiltrated by Antifa or Black Lives Matter or some other instigators or agitators. And we have a lot of evidence already that this did happen. Now here's a question that nobody seems to have asked yet. Why were there no counter protesters? This is extremely curious, considering that the protest was planned well in advance, well publicized, and was sure to be massive. It seems just the sort of thing that Antifa and BLM would have wanted to go to in order to counter protest, and yet no one. It's almost as if the organizers of these groups were told to stand down. And there are several other strong indications of a false flag, but the scariest thing is that the left appears to be planning a new false flag operation. And this time, I think they might be coming after our guns. I'm gonna get into all that in one moment. First, of course, I have to sell you something. Now, it's not often you get a gift for yourself in the holidays, is it? So how does a free 22 karat American Gold Eagle coin sound? To qualify, you have to take out a Precious Metals IRA or 401k rollover with Noble Gold. But it makes a lot of sense right now to keep your savings and investments safe. In case the worst happens, I mean, who knows what's gonna happen in the next four years. And because Noble Gold has helped thousands of investors keep their retirement funds safe from Washington meddling, they can clearly walk you through your options with no hard sell. They can help you protect your savings and your investments. So call 877-646-5347 and get this special coin offer, but don't procrastinate. Act now. That's 877-646-5347. Again, 877-646-5347. To make sure you mention me, Mr. Reagan, when you call. So, yeah, I haven't heard anyone else yet talk about this, and I think it's something worth considering. Democrats are suggesting that this whole operation was planned in advance by Republican politicians working with Trump. They think that this was some kind of tepid attempt to overthrow the government by force. Donald John Trump engaged in high crimes and misdemeanors by inciting violence against the government of the United States. I also intend to see that those members of Congress who abetted him, those members of Congress who had groups coming through the Capitol that I saw on January 5th, a reconnaissance for the next day, those members of Congress that incited this violent crowd, those members of Congress that attempted to help our president undermine our democracy, I'm going to see that they're held accountable, and if necessary, ensure that they don't serve in Congress. The president, assisted by members of Congress, um, incited an attack on the United States Capitol. Um, this is known as an act of insurrection, an act of sedition, um, and frankly, he is a traitor to our country, a traitor to the United States. Let me just say this. I've met a lot of hardcore former military and, you know, just redneck patriots. Had there been any serious attempt by Trump supporters to take over the Capitol that day, it would have happened. People would not have been walking around taking selfies. It would have been a carefully planned, meticulously executed operation. If these kind of folks had gone in intending to take congressmen prisoner or to execute them, there would have been congressmen taken or congressmen dead. As it is, nothing remotely like that happened, despite AOC's claims to the contrary. But it was clear that something odd happened that day because there's plenty of video showing that Capitol Police just let protesters in. They just opened up the doors for them. Many have noted, both on the right and the left, that Capitol Police seem to be severely understaffed for such a large gathering outside the Capitol. And there was fair warning that some kind of siege was planned. Just type in police warned about Capitol into any search engine and a million articles pop up. Capitol Police were warned by the FBI, by the NYPD, and even by journalists. Yet despite these warnings, the Capitol Police apparently did nothing to respond to the threat. In fact, according to many sources, the police presence was far less than what one would ordinarily expect under the circumstances, even without the threat. After the protesters clashed with police, they eventually made it into the Capitol. There are certainly videos of clashes, but there's also video of police opening barricades and even doors letting the protesters in. Now there's no good reason why the Capitol Police would have done this, except if they'd been ordered to. And it makes sense. If this is what Democrats wanted to happen in order to facilitate their PSYOP, 
And if the protesters were not acting violently enough, then they would have instructed the Capitol Police to stand down and to let the protesters in. After the protest, two Capitol Police officers died. One was reported to have succumbed to a blow to the head. Apparently, he'd been hit by a fire extinguisher. This is the only footage of any officer being struck by a fire extinguisher that I could find. And I have to say, this is not a deadly blow. Now, this may not have been the moment the officer was struck. It might have been another time, another place. But if all these officers were in riot gear and they had tactical helmets, I don't see how an officer would have been killed by a blow to the head from a fire extinguisher. It's not inconceivable, but I'm suspicious. The Democrats have a massive incentive to lie about this man's death. If the raid on the Capitol resulted in no significant damage and no significant injuries or death, well, then the Democrats would have less public support to take drastic action against Trump and against conservatives. However, if they can say this was a deadly attack, well, then that gives them more latitude. Trump supporters are further demonized and persecuting them seems a lot more justified. PSYOPs, psychological operations. It's all about public perception. Sadly, another Capitol Police officer later died, but not from the events of the Capitol. Rather, he's reported to have killed himself. Now, I looked into this guy's Facebook page. He was an awesome dude. He had a beautiful wife that he'd married in 2017. He was into race cars and Elvis and seemed to be a bit of an Anglophile. He did not seem suicidal. Now, that does sometimes happen. Sometimes people who seem happy inexplicably kill themselves. And, you know, I don't know this guy. People tend to make their lives seem happier on social media than they are in reality. But nevertheless, I'm skeptical. And let me tell you why. Both of these men, these police officers who died soon after the Capitol protest, both of these men were Republicans. The gentleman who was supposedly hit in the head with a fire extinguisher, he was a strong Trump supporter. The gentleman who supposedly committed suicide, his father had actually been a very prominent Republican in Washington, D.C. Now, I'm doing a lot of speculating in this video, and I'm not asking you to believe any of it. And what I'm about to say may seem rather far out, but think through this a moment. If the Democrats had planned a PSYOP, a false flag, and they worked with the Capitol Police to pull this off, some of those officers, conservatives, Trump supporters, Republicans, if they discovered too much about what was happening, and if the Democrats orchestrating the operation felt that these officers were too much of a threat, it is plausible that these men would have been murdered. The murder of these men would have served three purposes. One, they could no longer blow the whistle on the operation. Two, they'd serve as a warning to anyone else who might get any ideas about speaking out. And three, their deaths could be blamed on the protesters. And this would provide an opportunity for Democrats to label Trump supporters as violent and dangerous murderers. Now, many of you will think that this is nuts, and maybe it is. Again, I'm speculating. I never used to think this way, but seeing the kind of persecution going on at the moment, combined with my belief about how the election was engineered for the Biden win, I'm honestly convinced that these Democrats are capable of anything at this point. Now, besides the police issue, there was the issue of Antifa, or BLM insurgents, amongst the protesters. Now, I'm not convinced that any of these agitators were necessarily BLM or Antifa per se, but they were very clearly left-wing insurgents. They were dressed as Trump supporters, and they were trying to agitate the crowd. The most famous, of course, is John Sullivan. I am John Sullivan. As he walked through the Capitol, he could be heard encouraging the protesters to burn the Capitol down. Let's burn this down. We gotta, we gotta burn the, we gotta get this down. In another clip, we see him celebrating his effective instigation of the crowd to push them into the Capitol. And he is celebrating with photojournalist Jade Sacker. I'll give you your hug now. We did it. <laughs> you were right, we did it. Dude, I was trying to tell you. I, I couldn't say much. You were right. You just have to wash my chair. Oh my god. You weren't recording, were you? I'll delete that. But I didn't record you or me. It was just voices. And there were other known Antifa and Black Lives Matter folks there as well. So we do know that there were far left wing instigators who were there. The question then is this Were they recruited by Democrats who orchestrated the whole thing? We don't know. But as I see it, all signs point to yes. Another detail that's rather curious, 
was reported just the other day from Ayanna Presley's chief of staff. Apparently, Ayanna Presley had installed in her office several panic buttons, and according to Sarah Groh, her chief of staff, the entire unit had been removed just prior to the raid on the Capitol. Apparently, when the protesters were coming in, she got scared and she went to hit this button and she found that it was gone. That had to be a bit disconcerting. The question, of course, is who removed that system? Now, the left is speculating that it's Republican congressmen, right? On one website, a website called The Mary Sue, a woman by the name of Jessica Mason speculates that the siege of the Capitol was indeed all planned by, quote, extremist Republican Congress members, and that it was they who removed the panic button system. But the theory that Republican congressmen might have removed Ayanna Presley's panic button system just before a raid on the Capitol that they planned, this is essentially speculation that they attempted to murder her. <laughs> now, I would say that's insane, except I just basically speculated the same thing about the Democrats. <laughs> so, okay. Let's take this speculation seriously for one moment. Even if Republicans in Congress were the type of people willing to murder political enemies, Republicans would never have stripped out Ayanna Presley's panic button system. And they wouldn't have done this for one very significant reason. Nobody on the right cares about Ayanna Presley. She is utterly insignificant. I would go so far as to say that most conservatives don't even know who she is. She is by far the least known member of the squad. Until she stopped wearing her wig and going around bald in public, there was nothing that distinguished her at all. If there were some psycho Republican congressman willing to murder their Democrat colleagues, there are far higher priority targets than Ayanna Presley. I mean, I don't want to speculate about who they would target, but it wouldn't be Ayanna Presley. Now, Sorry, Ayanna, you're just not that special. And imagine if Ayanna had been murdered by Trump supporters. She's beloved by Democrats. I mean, look, this is pretty morbid, but that would actually be the best thing that could possibly happen to the Democrat Party at this moment. Just imagine the news. I mean, it wouldn't just be CNN calling these protesters evil monsters. It would be front page news around the world. Even conservatives would be horrified. Fox News, Wall Street Journal, Tucker, Ben Shapiro, me. I mean, literally everyone. There would be so much sympathy for the Democrats and so much condemnation of Trump supporters that such an incident would probably destroy the MAGA movement. And so it's not Republican members of Congress who had an incentive to remove that panic button system but rather Democrats. It makes perfect sense. Orchestrate a raid on the Capitol and then set up Ayanna Presley to be caught and killed by the violent MAGA mob. She becomes a Democrat martyr. It's the ultimate psyop. If Democrats plan this entire thing as a way to persecute conservatives, remove Trump from office, smear his presidency, and to revoke our First Amendment right to free speech, well then all this that I've just gone through, the cops, the left-wing instigators, the Ayanna Presley thing, this may be how things went down. And if so, this was an attempted coup, not by Republicans, but by Democrats. And I believe strongly that it was. All right, let's look back at my speculations. It appears that they may have instructed Antifa and BLM not to counter protest. It seems that they may have brought in left-wing agitators attempting not only to storm the Capitol, but to commit acts of vandalism, violence, and even arson to burn the Capitol down. It looks like they intentionally placed too few Capitol Police officers on the scene and that the officers who were there let the protesters in. It looks like they might have had two of the Capitol Police officers murdered in order to cover up their plot. And it appears that they may have set up Ayanna Presley to be killed so they could use her as a martyr. Now, look, I do realize that this sounds insane, but this all might be true. Or maybe some of it might be true. And look, maybe none of it's true. This is, admittedly, wild speculation on my part. I'm trying to think through what happened. And here are the facts. There were no counter-protests. There were leftist agitators. There were not enough Capitol Police. Protesters were let into the building. Ayanna Presley's panic button system was mysteriously removed. And two conservative Capitol Police officers did suspiciously die afterwards. I mean, 
that's a lot of very weird stuff. So I'm just looking at all this stuff and I'm trying to piece the puzzle together here. I'm trying to make sense of it all. I do recognize that the scenario I painted for you here sounds completely crazy. I get that. But this is what I've come up with. This is the scenario that makes sense to me in my head. And perhaps there are less dramatic explanations for everything that I've discussed here, but I don't know. This is what I think. Now, whether or not this was a false flag, the Democrats have exaggerated everything about that day and completely exploited the event in order to seize more power and persecute political enemies. One of the most egregious abuses that we've endured from this day is the crackdown on free expression. After the siege of the Capitol, things got really bad. Ron Paul was removed from Facebook. What the hell did Ron Paul do? Everybody loves Ron Paul. That's just ridiculous. There was a massive purge of conservative accounts on social media, and the president, Donald Trump, was banned from all major social media platforms. They cut him off from his ability to communicate directly with the American people. When conservatives tried to move from Twitter to Parler, that company was viciously attacked in an apparent coordinated effort to deny conservatives any conduit by which they might express their ideas. This is, indeed, the most egregious assault on the civil rights of one political party by another political party in the history of this country. The First Amendment right to free speech has been shredded, and this was all predicated on what appears to be a failed false flag. Why failed? Well, as I've already indicated, if this was planned by Democrats, I believe that they wanted things to get far more out of hand. I suspect that they wanted more people hurt, more people killed. I believe that they hoped that the Capitol would be burned to the ground. This would have given them a much more significant excuse to remove Trump, to persecute conservatives, and to strip us all of our civil rights. They are, of course, doing all of this anyway, but because the protesters didn't actually take the bait, because they didn't end up actually burning the Capitol to the ground, the measures currently being taken by the Democrats are clearly a massive overreaction. They're having to twist what happened, exaggerate the violence and destruction. I mean, they are outright lying about it. Because the patriots that stormed the Capitol didn't act like the monsters the Democrats hoped they would, the 25th Amendment thing, that's not going to work. Impeachment, that won't work. And there are probably several other actions that Democrats in Washington wished to take on the heels of this, this so-called insurrection, but they're unable to do any of this because Trump supporters just didn't take the bait. They weren't violent. They weren't destructive. I mean, these Trump supporters, they genuinely believe that the election was swindled by the Democrats. And so under those circumstances, I'd say they're the best behaved protesters ever. I mean, if that was an insurrection, that was the most chill insurrection in history. And so, because these Trump supporters were so well-behaved and the PSYOP failed, a new false flag has been announced. The other day, this image was distributed online. Armed march on Capitol Hill and all state capitals. This poster was very clearly not designed by a Trump supporter. Every conservative that I saw who posted this image did so with a warning. This is a trap. Do not go to this. Now, I'm not sure how the other conservatives knew that this poster was fake, but I'll tell you how I knew. I've studied graphic design. I worked professionally as a graphic designer for a few years. And I can tell you that this design, this is the kind of stuff you learn about in school. The thing that really jumped out at me is the bold diagonal type here. And especially when this is paired with the monochromatic image like this, the Statue of Liberty here, this is reminiscent of Soviet era propaganda. This this is stuff every student of graphic design gets exposed to. Now, this is definitely not what I would consider good graphic design, but this was definitely designed by a leftist. If this were designed by a gun-toting redneck militia guy, this poster would not look like a design student's cheap imitation of a Soviet propaganda poster. And so, look, this is the point here. If leftists are trying to create psyops like this, false flags, then we've got a serious problem. This means conservatives can't protest will always be infiltrated by leftists trying to make us look bad. And consider this. This poster encouraging conservative militias to come to the state capitals and to the U.S. Capitol armed? And they're very clear about that. They want you to come armed. Well, what this tells me is that they've moved beyond Amendment 1, and they're now going after Amendment 2. If a bunch of armed conservatives go to D.C. and 
you know, the various state capitals of protest and some leftist infiltrator sneaks in and they say, shoot a cop. Well, that's it. That's all the Democrats in D.C. would need to start grabbing guns. And you know what that means. If they go for the guns, it's civil war, no question. And that's not something I'm advocating, just to be clear. That's merely something that I foresee happening. If Democrats in Washington try to strip Americans of their Second Amendment rights, I just don't see conservatives not fighting back. So this is no longer political dirty tricks. This is an all-out assault on the principles upon which our country was founded. And I don't know if the left wants a civil war. I, I, I mean, I don't. I don't want a civil war. But it seems like they do. I mean, if I'm right about everything, the stuff that they're doing, it's so crazy, it will spark a civil war. I mean, I can't imagine they don't know that. That's obvious. But look, I hope I'm wrong. I hope that this is not what the Democrats are playing at. And I pray that we can somehow rise out of this mess and get America back on track. Stay strong, America. These are dark days. Good night. We're at war with the most dangerous enemy that has ever faced mankind in his long climb from the swamp to the stars. And it's been said if we lose that war and in so doing lose this way of freedom of ours, history will record with the greatest astonishment that those who had the most to lose did the least to prevent its happening.